we are all born into this world and as we see with babies and uh, there's just complete perceptual openness i see it i have uh, six nieces and with uh, all of them who were born i was like there's nothing going on i don't see them indulging avoiding or replacing their thoughts emotions and sensations but over the years i could see also in myself that i've been trained up to indulge avoid and replace my thoughts emotions sensations and other experiences and i tr started to from a very young age also to analyze myself why do i feel a certain way why do i feel sadness or why do i feel anger or why do i feel this and that and the other thing and build all kinds of story like i can write an entire book about it and share it with you and you will all be completely bored <laughs> about all the cause and effects of why do I feel the way I feel. And, and once I did that, I also tried to look for solutions, right? Because we don't analyze ourselves, for example, just the indulging. I didn't do it, do it for the sake of analyzing myself. I wanted to find relief. I wanted to find stability. I wanted to find the freedom that I knew is available somehow, but I never could grasp it completely. And, and this was the case also with all kinds of thoughts and emotions. I'm not sure how is your mind, but mine is very active. I have many thoughts, emotions and sensations, what we call in Balanced View data. And this data is for, are forever changing, unpredictable, ceaseless. Check it in your own experience and see if it is like that or not. Did you have just one thought since you came to the Balanced View Center today? Be honest, be honest, be honest. <laughs> Many thoughts, emotions, sensations constantly changing. And what we train up as human beings, most of us, by media, by, by uh, our family, friends, and our own ideas and books that we read, is that something is wrong about ourselves. That's how I felt for almost my entire life before meeting, coming across the Balanced View training. Something is fundamentally wrong about myself and I need to sort it out. I need to sort myself out. My thinking is flawed and my emotions are bad at times and uh, things in my past that need to be purified and so on. So there was a lot of work. Like I just woke up in the morning and then, okay, job starts and I need to be very good at it if I want to be happy. So I, I did so many things in order to try and reach this point of happiness. And guess what? Sometimes I did find it. And I was like, ha ha, wow. Yes, I found it. And this technique and that technique worked, whether conventional or unconventional or very unconventional, all the things that I've done. And I thought, wow, I'm, I'm the best. I just did it. And I don't have many thoughts or they're not negative. Great. How can I hold on to it forever? <laughs> so it will never change this sense of happiness or relief. So I tried all my best and you see immediately there was suffering there because I was trying to hold on to something that does not have an cannot be found to have an independent nature. A thought of I'm happy. <laughs> and after a moment I felt stressed or something happened. I got a phone call. I looked at my bank account. That's the best uh, afflictive uh, state. <laughs> You know, you think, you're, oh, I'm in Goa, everything's fine, I did my meditation, I ate just spinach, and, and I'm feeling amazing. <laughs> and then you look at your bank account, or worse, the bank account called your parents because they don't have your number. <laughs> and they say, <laughs> check with Asaf again what he's doing, because <laughs> red numbers appear in the bank account. Right? <laughs> my mom is here to confirm. So... <laughs> <laughs> so... So when that happened, I lost my happiness and I felt, oh, how can I justify, how can I run away, how can I not think about it, indulge, avoid, replace, because something came up that felt uncomfortable. And that kept going on and on and on and on until a point where I reached and I felt, wow, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just 25, that was then, and I felt completely tired and fed up by hearing again that I'm flawed, there's a great destination somewhere, and you might get there, but you need to effort loads and loads and loads and loads and maybe you will get there. So the chances were so minimal that I was like, oh, 
not sure about living in this way. <laughs> Can I have something that is actually direct and will cut the root of all of this nonsense? Because I'm tired. I don't want to try anymore. And I'm sharing that with great respect for all the many things that I've done because everything led me to here, to see reality as it is through what is offered in the Balanced View training. So we all know that the mind goes all over the place. Uh, we are honest enough and we have a direct look. We just did it now. You didn't have just one thought. You had many. And emotions and sensations and opinions, all of this data forever changing. And then we have the ability to see what is in the basis of all of that. What is always stable, clear, available, always on, never switched off. And this is open intelligence. This is education in the nature of mind and we can be introduced to it right in the spot by stopping thinking for a moment. You're trying it, I can see. Stop thinking and see what remains when you stop thinking. Alertness, clarity, the power to know this is open intelligence, this is what's looking, always there, always present. Open intelligence, so our nat the nature of our mind, the nature of our intelligence is not a far off destination, it's always here. So the seeking and looking for it in all kinds of descriptions is very limited. We are limiting our own recognition of open intelligence, but when we stop thinking we see what remains the stability and clarity, open intelligence. And immediately thoughts come back, data come back. And that's completely fine, because open intelligence can be recognized whether we are thinking or not thinking, wh whether we have many thoughts or we don't have thoughts at all. All of that, this dynamic energy, the data streams are inseparable from open intelligence. They don't have an independent nature of, from open intelligence. Like the color blue doesn't have an independent nature of sky, they're inseparable, not two. And that sounds great for some. <laughs> for me it was like, wow, that's interesting, I didn't know that. I thought that there's my mind, there's my thoughts, there's my emotion, and I need to clean it, sort it for the rest of my life until I collapse and then look back, oh, what did I actually do? <laughs> that's how I spend my energy. So, I ho oh, interesting, inseparability. So then what happened? I started to think about the inseparability. Yeah, color blue and the sky, mm -hmm. thought, emotion, sensation, and that's very natural. But what we can do instead is, and that's the practice that we offer in Balanced View, and that is to take a short moment of open intelligence, instinctively recognizing this basic state, open intelligence, and take a short moment, repeat it many times until this instinctive recognition becomes continuous at all times. And that's completely guaranteed. Why it's guaranteed and we can say it so clearly? Because it's already the case. We simply ignore that by emphasizing our thoughts, emotions and sensations and giving them an independent nature that they don't have. So for me, I tested it with many, many data streams over the last years. And I, I initially, I, I tested it with, I, I was most eager and interesting to take a short moment when things didn't go well. I got the phone call from my parents that got a phone call from the bank. Or I woke up in the morning and felt this sense of sadness. And I saw my options, you know, it's like a drop-down menu in my intelligence where I saw I can indulge it again and speak about it, try to analyze it and reach nowhere, but be exhausted at the end of it. I will try to replace the sadness with another data stream, like, no, I mean, go, I'm happy, for sure I'm happy, look at all my friends, and I look this or that, and I ate this, I'm happy, I'm happy, and trying to convince myself or trying to avoid it and not feel it. All of these strategies, and so I, saw, I woke up in the morning, saw the drop-down menu, but then there was another option. Allow it to be as it is. Ooh. For a short moment, not, not like for an entire day, just for one short moment, allow your current perception to be as it is. And see what happens. When I tried it for the first time, it was like, wow. <laughs> I was there so busy to get rid of my data streams, but they are just self-releasing, like a line drawn in water. 
leaving no trace. All of the things that I try to get rid of appear one moment at a time, never leaving a scar, mark in my intelligence. They're self-releasing. And see it in your own experience. Test it. And once we experience this freedom in immediacy of perception, it's very fun and exciting to repeat it again and again because we want to gain confidence in that. I saw, wow, that, that feels too good and it doesn't require any effort this short moment. So I can try it again and again and again until I can gain confidence, gradual confidence in this power to be of benefit. Because what happens when we rest as open intelligence and that's also very much I know some of you are starting today the 12 empowerments what an incredible gift to see all of the all, all of life from the perspective of open intelligence and how we can really be of benefit rather than be victims of our own data streams and this is what you shared you know um, where it's heartbreaking to see human beings relating to each other men to men w men to women country to country everyday relating that is so uh, pervaded by violence and ignorance of open intelligence so for sure when when you just ask your question everyone felt it you know wow it's it shouldn't be this way and there must be a solution even with the hopelessness that i felt many times around the situation of the world and politics i felt wow we are not going anywhere but what I started to see in my experience, and, and it can relate specifically to what you asked the relating uh, to women and, and all the things that go on today in the news, which is very eye-opening to many people, and, and, and feeling it fully for the benefit of all, not avoiding those uh, thoughts and emotions and even memories for some of us of things that happened in the past, but clarifying it in our own direct experience through short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. Each short moment that we take is for the benefit of all. We feel it for everyone. And not just that, we empower to make a stand. And this is really what is empowered in Balanced View. We are empowered to make a stand for what is important and what is so essential, education in the nature of intelligence. I know that through the practice of open intelligence and, and the 12 empowerments, I could see violence in myself, the internal violence of me dealing with my data streams, trying to get rid of some, beat them up, trying to hold on to others, um, marginalizing some of my data, data streams, my thoughts and emotions. I could see all of this played, played in myself and I felt very sad. I felt very sad that I spent my entire life basically trying to f fix something that doesn't need to be fixed. And I felt while doing the 12 empowerment somewhere in the middle, I felt extreme heartbreak. And then suddenly I saw, wow, it's not just for me, it's for everyone. And what, what not just feeling it for everyone, I also have a solution for taking responsibility to be of benefit to all. I'm empowered inseparably from all of these data streams to be of benefit to all. And that's what we see in the community of Balanced View, the result of people taking responsibility. So those things like the, the, the sexual harassment and all of these things uh, that happen and the violence is just not happening in the environments of Balanced View because people are completely empowered to take full responsibility. And for me, it gives hope because if we can do it, you know, people from all over the world with different backgrounds and ideas and religions and whatever, sexes and preferences, if we can all live together, not just peacefully, but in such an empowered way and give everything to the benefit of all, I know that it's possible for everyone. And for me, it gives hope where in times of hopelessness or intensity because I, I, I just see the results every day.